Hey everybody, I'm back again. I've got another video on how to do something for Second Life using Substance Painter. I had an idea pop into my head. So up to now, I've only been using Substance Painter to do model uh, to do texturing on things where I actually have the model, where I have either a DAE or a OBJ or an FBX actual 3D model. And I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could use Substance Painter for when I don't have a model. Um, but that's the thing it requires. You have to have a model to use it. So what I had done in the past was I had built a simple planar model, which I call a simple plane, uh, which I can show you. This is, this is a simple plane. I had done this before, but I actually had it laying flat on the ground. And I found out that that makes the textures look funny if you have it laying flat on the ground. The lighting is from the lighting comes in really really weirdly and uh, it doesn't look right so moving forward I decided oh yeah okay I'll turn this upright so that the lights hitting it from the side like most likely your lighting is going to actually be hitting things right so that was the first thing I, I changed um, but all this is it's a simple mesh plane that you can create in blender in about a minute and a half but I added some detail to it. So if you actually go into object, into edit mode, you can see that there's a bunch of geometry. So I had just subdivided it 20 times each direction. So I had some geometry. Because what I found was if you didn't do that and you just used four vertices, that you didn't get enough geometry for the textures to really develop and look right in Substance Painter. So this gives you a good amount of geometry to work with. So it's just a simple plane. And then you, um, you go into Substance Painter and you... To a new project and you open it up i'll show you the 3d 3d so there's my simple plane all right actually actually i have stuff already on here so let me hide all this stuff i should have probably started a clean version i got so excited when i did this that i, I had to share it okay there it is that's my simple plane see it's only one-sided and it's just the simple square and you want it to be square because your t your 2D textures are, are square, right? A 2D texture is 512 by 512, 1024 by 20, 1024, or 2048 by 2048. So I'm using 2048 by 2048 in Substance Painter when I did this. So I just put this simple plane in here. And then what I had done before was I would take one of these textures, like one of these wood materials, and I would drop it on here. And then I would export that. And I, you would get a three material files. You get the diff, the spec, and the norm, right? And then I would import those into Second Life, or sorry, I would then take those into Photoshop with the material, not the material, the, uh, the AO file for the prefab mesh that I was working with, and I would make my own textures. And it worked okay, but you lose so much detail and you lose so much of the the, the, the good things that Substance Painter provides for you when you do that. And it, they they looked good, but they didn't look as good as if you had done it with the, with the actual model. So today I was sitting around and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if there was a way that I could actually take, because prefabs come with AOs. So you get a bunch of AO texture files, right? Shade maps. So I thought, wouldn't it be a, cool if there was a way that I could go into Substance Painter and import my prefabs AO file and lo and behold there is a way to do that and so that's what I discovered today was how I could do that so you start with the same basic process and I have a video that explains how to do this about creating the simple plane and how to use it to generate textures um, so if you watch that video you'll and then you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about up to this point, right? So uh, let's get rid of that. I don't want that here to contaminate my workspace. So basically all you have to do is you, you, you take those AO files that you get with your prefab mesh and you just import them here into Substance Painter. And so you just go to File, Import Resources, and then you browse to where you have them. And here's all my AOs. And then you just select all of them and hit Open. And then that's going to import them in. I, I don't actually want to do that because I've already done it. And and when you do that, they'll show up here in this in this uh, what do they call this? It's not a bucket uh, panel. I, th I think there's a more technical term for this area down here, but uh, they'll show up in here, and it'll be a 
uh, like a little search phrase in here that says imported resources. And so it, it only shows you the things that you just imported until you move away from that. And then you can't find them again. <laughs> you can't. You can find them again because they're in textures. So if you look down here, these are the different categories. So one of them is textures, this one. And so, oh, let's just show me what it's at. They're in here somewhere. So it, it's very unorganized. There's, there it is right here. There's, that's the comforter. There's the covers. And I didn't save them to my library because I don't need these except for the thing I'm working on. So I save them when you import resources into uh, Substance Painter, you have an option. So I'll, I'll go ahead and try to import something. Oh, I export, import. Import resources. I'll just import this one. Um, so you get this panel. You have to tell it where it says undefined. You can't be undefined. So you have to tell it that it's texture. That's all. So you, you'll have a list of them here. For each one of them, you have to tell it that it's a texture. And then you get this option down here. It says import your resources too. You can import it to your library. And then those, those AOs are going to be cluttering up your Substance Painter library forever, <clears throat> which I don't want. I only need these for this project. I don't need them for anything else. So I could save them to this project. And then if I save the file, they'll be in there. Uh, and then if I open up a new file, they won't be in those new files, but they will be in this every time I actually do it. So that's what you want to do. You want to save it to this. The third option is current session. That's actually what I did save them to. So if I, if I save, they're not saved with the file. And if I um, exit out of this and start like a new project, I won't have them. So uh, I probably shouldn't have done current session. I probably should have done project. But anyway, they're in here. You can see they're, they're right here. So once you've imported them, what you'll see is they show up over here in your layers. And so here they are in my layers. Uh, but they have the name of... Um, it names them based on the material that you use in blender so i had applied a material called plane so they all showed up as plane one plane two plane two plane three plane four all the way through plane 15. so um actually um, actually hold on they don't show up over here they don't show up over here that was a big mistake they don't show up over here they only show up down here in this tray that's the term for it it's a tray so they show up in the tray and right now because i've moved on i have to go find them again they're down here so all you do is you just drag these onto your model so you take one of them from here and you just drag it on the model when you drag it on the model that puts it in the layer and then it will say plane one and we'll, you, you can see the ao in this little image here um, and then you just double click this and name it and i named it for the part that it is so this one it, it, it's called comforter so i would call this one comforter the one that was called base i would call it it would be called base so just rename all of these to match the name of of your actual materials and then you're good so now you've got a list here in your layer you have a layer for every single one of them and then what i found was just leave it at normal this is like a what i call layer masking in photoshop uh, you want to leave these at normal you want them at 100 percent transparency or opacity um, but then down in the for each one of these you got to go down to the properties and scroll down until you see these sliders and then what I found was um, I was getting a lot of weird glaring and, and, and strange mistiness looking in the textures in, in uh, Second Life. So I found that for these imported AOs, just slide roughness all the way over to one and metallic all the way to one because they come out like they were here and they, they didn't look right. So I have them hidden now. I turned the eyeball off that, showed, that hides them. So that's what it looks like. And so you can see when you put roughness on, you actually get you get a real shininess. That's the actual HDRI light source that's reflecting here. And we don't want them, we don't want our AOs to be shiny. So put that all the way up. And same thing for metallic. It gives you the kind of see how it looks like the, the black becomes gray. You get this kind of shininess. So turn that off. So make sure those are for every single one of these AOs that you put in here. Slide roughness and metallic all the way over. Okay. And then you can just leave these, um, you can turn these all on or turn them off. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and turn them back on so you can see them. Now you can only see the top layer. So that's why it doesn't matter if I show these or not because you can't see them. Okay. 
So the, you can only see the top one in your window here. Now, for, for easiness, I set this to 2D only. That's my display up here. So now it's a 2D. So you can see, aha, uh -huh, there's my 2D image. That's the AO for my, um, the base of my furniture. Now comes the fun part. So you just go over to your materials or smart materials or materials. You find the kind of material you want. So I'm going to work with wood. So let's just search for wood. And the one I like to work with a lot is this one called Wood One. And just drag it on your model. Okay, and there's your wood on your model. Okay, but we lost our AO. We don't see the AO anymore. So how do you combine two layers? You use a layer mask. And so you just put a layer mask on this top layer, which is this drop down. pick multiply. Now I have my wood and my AO combined. And I get the norm and the spec from my wood grain, not from the AO. And I remember I did those sliders, I moved the roughness and metallic all the way over. So there's nothing really from uh, the norm and spec perspective coming from the AO anymore. It's just from the wood grain, which is what I want. That's the actual what you want to have. Okay, and then when you're done with this, you just export. File, export textures. Set this up for Second Life. I have a video that shows you how to do that. Set it to 16-bit dilation plus default background color. Then you don't need the AO, so you can turn that off. We're only going to export the diffuse, the normal, and the specular. And it's going to name it based on the texture set, which is this thing over here, uh, which is fine. So you export it. Boom. There's the three files. Now, if I show you in my... This is my... Explore. There they are, okay. And then let's go into Second Life. And there it is, I, I've already applied it. Um, yeah, so many things open. Um, I already applied it there. Okay, so let's go get another one. Let's go back and we'll, we'll generate the next one. Um, oops, wrong window. Okay, so that was base. Now, how do I get the next AO done? Well, just hide base. And now this is called HB interior. I want the same wood grain, so I'm going to just do that and do file, export texture, export. They're going to have the exact same names, which is fine. Just go back to Second Life, do build, upload, bulk take these three things get them into your inventory and then you can rename them if you want to it's easier to rename them here than it would be in substance painter so you can rename this to be hb interior specular hb interior normal hb interior diff if you ever want to use these again which i really don't care so i'm just going to use them so edit my model the interior is that piece back there. It was really weird on this model. I, I didn't make this model. So, so just put the diff here. The normal. And the spec. Okay. Then we'll go back to Substance Painter. Turn off HB interior. I named these all, so they didn't come this way. The next one's called HB slats. And then just do Control shift E for export, export them. Go back to Second Life, build, upload, bulk. Upload the same three again. This time it's this part. And then they're in, so go ahead and apply the diffuse, the normal, specular. Okay, let's go back again. I separated my materials over here, my AOs. I put the woods together and then I put the cloth at the bottom. So turn off HB slats and I have what I call HB trim. Export. And this is much faster than doing this in, in Photoshop, right? In Photoshop, I, I would be spending a lot more time. Uh, go back. We're going to upload bulk a lot of redundant uploading 
upload that. This is the trim piece for the back, the headboard. That's why it's called the HB. HB's headboard trim is this piece over here. So we're going to do that. Go texture diff. Normal. Specular. Now, I could have done this without the AOs, and it would have it would look really flat. With the AOs in Substance Painter, not only do I get an AO blended in with my diff, I get uh, a really good-looking norm and a really good-looking spec out of it, too. Okay, let's go back to uh, Substance Painter. Move down. The next one is called Post Footboard Left. Now I could just go export, 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 but they would since they're all the same name, it would overwrite them. So what I could do is I could change the name in Substance Painter, export, change the name in Substance Painter, export, change the name in Substance Painter, export. But that's it's harder to change the name. So it's easier just to do it this way. You got to be careful and keep track of because they're all the same name. You're like, ah, oh, did I import? But if you didn't, it just screws it up, and, and then you just fix it. Bulk. Okay, this is the this this is this post. Okay, they're in. And yes, all four posts have different looks to them, and the lighting is different because they're in different positions. So it, it would matter, but I didn't do it that way, so it probably doesn't matter. But I noticed that the AOs were slightly different for each of the four posts. So we'll do them one by one. Go back to here. Now we're going to do post foot board right. And then we will build upload bulk. We're going to do this one. Nope, not that one. This one. I'm not going to do the whole bed because it takes time. I think you get the idea. We'll just look at the wood when I'm done with it. Okay. Diff. And when you go to the new version of, of uh, Second Life that uses PBR materials, do the same process, but you only have to export the PBR. And then you just put one thing instead of three. So it become even, even better. Uh, normal. Hello. I just put a spec in my normal. What is going on? Why is it doing that? Stop being slow. Normal here. Specular here. Diffuse. I don't know why it didn't do it. Okay, there it is. Next one's going to be that one, which is HL, post HL. That's the post headboard left. Export. One day maybe I'll show you the whole process. This is a Roar model that I bought. It would maybe it would be interesting to show you my entire workflow process. Build, upload, look. for how to texture something like a Roar model. He names his models with numbers, so that it's like. When I when I was editing this, all of the the AOs were like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and I, that's meaningless to me. So I and so I went through the first thing I do is I edit the model, I pick the texture, and then I rename the texture to something meaningful, and then I assign that same name to the part for my texture changer because it uses it in in the descriptions here. Anyway, uh, they're here, so let's go ahead and stick them on. Fuse. Did you know you could do that? And you're going, uh, did I know I could do what? So this was over in like content or maybe it was on general. It was on the general tab. Um, you can just drag this, drag your thing over and then just go up to the little tabs and it'll open the tab you want. Saves you a little bit of time. That's my spec. I don't want to put it in the spec. All right. And then it's going to do that one, which is the post headboard, right? Go back over here. Turn that off. 
post headboard right is right here so should be those. and then there's one more part which is called the rod which i i don't think i'm going to do in wood i think i'll do in iron okay so there we go this will be the last wood piece so let's go ahead and build upload bulk one more time and we will drag them on okay so that's all the wood done so let's just take a look at it I think it turned out great. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? The detail is just you you're not gonna you're not gonna get like this out of Photoshop easily. It'd be very difficult. And I didn't have to worry about the orientation of the woods. I didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So it was just so simple. All right, now let's go back and we'll we'll do a little bit of a, do a little bit more. I'm having fun. So all right, so that was wood. So I, I don't need the wood anymore that wood if I wanted to do another wood like say I wanted to make it uh, let's pick like this wood oops where's my model hello I can't find my model there it is ah what are you doing oh don't do that Ah, doesn't matter. The orientation, this is just the camera view. It doesn't really matter. So drag another wood on like that. And then just make sure that the green of the wood matches the, the, the green in most of your uh, AOs. So the green should be going left to right. And the green on this goes left to right. So, okay. And then just go set the wood to multiply. And now repeat that process. But I don't really like that. I think that looks like crap. So I don't want that. So I'm not going to use that wood. But uh, let's try this one. Well, it looks very washed out. It's got a lot of glow on it. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, I may have to go down and play with some of the roughness settings on this. Might be too high. Might need adjusting. It's a good thing the one that I did looked really good. Anyway, let's go back and we'll just move on. I got one wood out of it. So let's go down and we'll do... This is the rod. Hello. Okay, rod. And then I want to put a metal. So let's do... I think I have one called rod iron or something. Yeah. Rod iron, yep. There's the rod iron. Kind of, it's not really dark enough. I'm not sure I like that. Let me try a different one. Ooh, definitely don't like that one. Oh, the other thing you can do is play with your light source. So let me move my light. The light could be hitting it. Especially on that one, which is very reflective, it could be hitting it too directly. So under your display settings here, you have under environment, this uh, environment rotation, you can actually change the light. So it's where the light hits things. So that actually looks pretty good. So how does it look with this? So this is this old iron. And go back and play with the light. So you can see when the light's shining directly at it, it gets really bright. It looks almost like steel. Not going to play with that one. We're going to use this one, and I like the way it looks right now. So we're going to export that. All right. Go back to Second Life. Build. Upload. Bulk. Same three. 
edit my model, edit link, pick the metal piece up here, and apply the textures. There you go. Turned out good. I like that. Oh, I missed a piece. That's called HB back, I think. Oh, where is that at? Oh, did I delete the wood? I deleted the wood, so we got to re-add the wood. All right. Hmm. Try playing with that. I'll put it back where it was for the first ones because when I did the first woods, it was all the way over here. So that's where I'll keep it. Multiply and then look for something called HB back. There it is. Why is it black at the bottom? Let's, no, wrong button. And go build, upload, bulk. Edit, edit link, and then texture. Normal. Specular. And there you go. That's all the wood. Ooh, move around way too fast. I think that looks great. Uh, I haven't played with the cloth yet, so I don't know how that's going to turn out. But if you want to, we can experiment and see. I'm afraid it's going to be... Take a little bit of practice, but we'll try it. Let's see. All right, so the first one's going to be the comforter. I don't want a wooden comforter, so let's go look for some fabric. I think that's the term that gets you the best results. I don't have tons of fabric in here, but the other thing you can do, which is, which is really cool too, so if you have some, some fabric textures that you like, you can import them just like I did before. You can import them here. And then you can go in and say, take this linen, like uh, you know, like this stretchy. No, that's not a good one. Yeah. I want something with a fabric grain to it. Canvas dirty. How about that? I don't want a dirty canvas for my uh, my comforter. I hope there's not a lot of gloss on this. It shouldn't be. Okay, there it is, and then we're just going to do multiply. All right. So there you can see it's got a cloth grain to it, right? That's what it's going to look like. Actually, I, I think that looks great. But let's say I don't want to use that texture. I want to use something else that I have in my vast collection of textures, seamless textures that I have. Um, you can import them into Substance Painter and then um, just edit this material. It's a folder, so there's a whole bunch of stuff. Go down to the bottom of that. There should be like a base material in here. Wow, this has got a lot of stuff in here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right there it is. That's the base. That's the base they're using, and they're just using color. Wow, they, they, they spent a lot of time in Substance Designer creating this texture. But if I just want to change it, and because they've done so much in here and there's so many layers, this might not be a good candidate for it. Um... So yeah, might not work, but we'll try it. See what happens. You can apply a texture. So there's a whole bunch of textures in here. I've got all these black and white textures. I've got some color textures that I use commonly. Uh, let's just pick like uh, something that might make make it look good. Like let's do the fleur de lis, and we, we just drag it in here onto this uniform color. Where it says base color, you drag it there. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. 
Oh, I dragged it the wrong place. There it is. And there, that's what it did. So it didn't change the whole thing. That's cool. It just put the Florida Lee on there, but it's upside down. So I can then think you can rotate it. Uh, it doesn't give me an option to rotate it. Oh, here it is. Rotate. So if I do 180 on that, let's see what happens. 180. Zero. Oops. Didn't mean to hit that button. Okay. So it did put the fleur de lis on there. But let's uh, let's say, okay. Mm, it's too big. So I can do tiling and I can increase the number of them. Like, like so. And then if I don't like the color of the fleur de lis, I can come down in here. Oh, no, I can't. I can't do it there. But what I can do, if I want to do a different color on this, I can actually mask a color onto it. But we won't, we won't get into that. All right, and then do Control-Shift-E to export. Let's go back. Build. Upload. Bulk. This is my comforter. Drag it on. There goes the diff. Normal. And, oops, I dragged it to the right. My microphone's in the way, that's why I can't see. Put it here. Normal and specular. Oh, it's upside down. What did I fail? I thought I made it the, oh, maybe I didn't need to make it 180. Oh, uh, what? Isn't that? That's weird. It's completely different here than what it shows here. This is the top. So, okay. So, let's do it again. I switch it back. I don't know why it's doing that. Trial and error. You live and learn, right? Could probably just upload the diff but i'm going to do all three because there could be some subtle differences in the norms and the specs and if it comes out the same way i'm going to go i don't know why this is happening hey okay <laughs> it's illogical makes zero sense but works no, don't put it on there. Norm goes in the normal slot, not the diffuse slot. My norms are coming out kind of white. Should be more blue and red, more purple. Okay, anyway, there you go. So now we have a nice looking cloth with a embossed kind of uh, fleur de lis pattern on it. Only thing we have left to do is the sheets, which I kind of like the white sheets, so I might leave them like that for now. Anyway, there you go. That's how to do. That's how to cheat. That's how to use Substance Painter to generate textures for prefab mesh where you don't have the actual mesh itself. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me on Second Life.